our weekly micro moment. Today we are going to revisit canning tomato sauce because I have a great shortcut for you that was suggested by one of our viewers. After I made the video on making tomato sauce, oh it's been maybe a month ago, someone suggested that why are you running everything through that food mill? Why don't you just put it in your blender and blend up the skin and the seeds as well? And so I got to thinking about that and wondered, my gosh, she's right. I could certainly do that and save a lot of mess. And so I did a practice batch and it turned out just great. So I have two samples to show you. This is from the original um, video that we did and the viscosity is just perfect, it's great. If you look closely, you can see a few seeds that got through the food mill. And I have used this um, from other jars from this batch and they just work beautifully. Now, this is one that I did in my practice batch. Now, if Jen can get a close-up of this, um, it, is, it looks a little bit different. The smoothness is not quite the same. It is because I ran it through the blender and there are pockets of watery tomato liquid in the jar. And you can see little bits and pieces of the seed. But once I shake it up, it really is indistinguishable from this one. And so in my practice batch with using this shortcut, I had 10 half pints and I'll be darned if three of them did not seal. Honestly, I'm getting so sick of having lids that don't seal, I could just scream. And so um, those lids were the thicker lids. You might recognize these with no, they were labeled ball, but they were thicker and this didn't seal. So this has been sitting in the refrigerator because of course it can't go on the shelf if it didn't seal. So I do have what I think are regular ball lids, the this, this, um, more thin ones. But if I have any that don't seal, I'll tell you what I'm going to do from now on, is regardless of what kind of lid I use, I'm going to put a tattler gasket underneath it until I run out of gaskets. So what I'm going to do today is just the shortcut part and then bring you back when everything is done. Uh, the other video that I did about a month ago, I will put a link to that on the very last uh, slide so that if you want to go back and re-watch how I did that, um, how I processed those tomatoes, that's fine. But just realize that when you get to the part where I'm running that food mill, all of that is now gone. Hallelujah. So the tomatoes are all done. We're, we're supposedly going to get a freeze tonight, so probably all of our at least outdoor tomatoes will be gone in the next day or two. So I'm draining out most of the water and just putting the tomatoes in here. And this is a mixture of um, cherry tomatoes and Roma tomatoes and then just regular tomatoes. And then I'm just going to blend the living daylights out of it. me to death. I thought I had just turned it down and it was on high. So that was a surprise. So here's what this looks like up close. I hardly see any evidence of skin or seeds. Now it's all full of air right now and that will gradually uh, come to the uh, top. And um, I'm gonna finish this, get it in the jars, and then I've got the canner going over here. When everything is done, we will come back to see our results. But how easy is that? I will be adding lemon juice and litmus paper, look at this. I'm almost out of litmus paper, but I'm going to be checking the pH to be sure we can water bath can it, make sure it's good to go, and then we'll bring you back when I'm taking them out of the canner. All right, so these have been out about 10 minutes, and I believe that all of them 
have popped. Now these have the little buttons and so I can visually see that the buttons are now um, concave instead of poking up. The sound doesn't work very well with these. Let me show you what happens. See that sound? The button is down on this one, but I think there's a lot of tomato gunk on the underside of the lid that is making it do that. I also wanted to show you um, that some of them are already making water on the bottom. I can't see the bottom, but I can see the side where the water is starting to. Right down here, do you see that? Oh, that. Okay. Yeah, that's maybe, all water. Okay, maybe it's air bubbles. Then. Yeah, there's a lot of air bubbles because okay. of the blender. The okay. blending put a lot of air into these. So some have that water forming. There's a little bit of water on the bottom of this one. Yeah. There's still um, air bubbles in almost all of them. All of them, actually. There's some more water on the bottom. Yeah. And that is to be expected. Now, this could be considered kind of a little downside for doing it this way. For those of you that have taken the online water bath canning class that we offer, and the link is below if you're interested in taking a look at that, uh, you know why that water is forming. We talked about that in our class. And so this is a perfect example of how that does form. Now, does it hurt anything? No, it doesn't. And the only thing that I would worry about is for the ones that sound thick like that, which is most of them, there's one, there's one. So we have about three that sound like they have uh, popped. The others are just thunk, 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 but it's not that echoey thunk. I can distinguish the sound difference, but if you're a newbie, it would be very difficult for you to distinguish the sound difference. And so once these are completely cooled uh, tomorrow, then what you would want to do is take the band off and then see if you can lift it up just by the lid, uh, lid only with no fingers on the jar at all. And if that lid holds, then you know that it, is, it has popped and it will be fine. So the little bit of water on the bottom of these doesn't bother me, neither do the air pockets that are throughout, because I'll just shake it up uh, once it's all completely cooled and then these will be just fine. These little smaller batches of tomato sauce that I've been doing, um, we just never have had a, a lot of tomatoes come on at the same time where I can do a large batch of whole tomatoes or crushed tomatoes. <clears throat> and the biggest that our tomatoes are getting are only about this big, which is fine. They really have a good flavor, but it's been a very nice mixture of those three different varieties of tomatoes. And I probably have now, I'm guessing maybe 30 of these little half pints. And um, if you are looking up the USDA processing time for half pints, you won't find it. You will find the processing time for uh, pints, and that is 45 minutes. Anytime you use a jar that is smaller than the um, one that is in the USDA guidelines, then you use the next highest processing time. So I did use the processing time of 45 minutes for pints for our elevation, which was 5,000 feet. So I'm very pleased with this shortcut. I'm very happy that one of our subscribers let us know that this was a possibility. And um, it's great. And, and there's probably more nutrition in these with the ground up skin and the seeds. So this is a very nice addition to our food storage. So thank you for joining us and we will see you next week with our micro moment next Monday.